Thank you, Dr. Peterson. Thank you for your time and your words. Myself, as a practicing Catholic, I often hear you talk about um, what actually the role of a psychologist in therapy is. And um, I see a lot of similarities with the sacrament of confession. So, um, you know, stating your sins and receiving absolution. Um, so, my question is like, what's the utility of that sacrament from a psychological perspective? Well, one of the things I talked about when I was speaking tonight was the utility of bringing your insufficiencies to mind. Now, when a proper confession is actually supposed to be a confession, what you're supposed to do is go to confession, think up the ways that you were stupidly self-destructive, admit that they exist, and desire most devoutly that you can find your way forward despite the fact that you're quite a fool and a lot of trouble to boot. And everyone needs that because we're all fools and trouble to boot. And it's necessary for us to keep what we're not doing right first and foremost in our minds without dying from that, right? Without crushing ourselves. One of the things that Carl Jung said about the Catholic Church as opposed to the Protestant Church was that the, uh, the, the confessional ritual was very merciful, you know, like a Catholic would go to church and describe all the ways they're insufficient, he or she is insufficient, and then be given an opportunity to start again, right? Well, that's a big opportunity, and we all need that, right? I mean, God, you're making mistakes all the time. You need a mechanism to sort of clear your conscience once you've accepted responsibility so that you can move on, and that's atonement and forgiveness. Now the church can bestow that on you. I would also say to some degree that's useful procedurally, you know. You might be guilty about enough about something you've done so you can't bloody well let yourself off the hook, you know, and you can see that there might be some sense in that because maybe you need a good slap because what you did was pretty stupid. But by the same token, denigrating yourself constantly about it for the rest of your life isn't necessarily a productive way of moving forward. Well, people get caught though, they don't know how to forgive themselves and move on. Well, if you're enmeshed in a structure like the Catholic Church, it takes that off of you in some sense and says, well, it's not even up to you exactly to forgive yourself. It's that if you come clean in relationship to your sins and you aim to do better, then it's possible that the grace of God could revisit you. And we bloody well all better hope that's the case. And luckily it does seem to be the case, you know, is that people can dip pretty low into the abyss and still struggle up and forward. And thank God for that, because thank God. that happens to every single person to some degree. I think that therapists are secularized priests. Obviously, almost everything that's part of the psychotherapeutic process is a variant of confession and atonement. You know, and it isn't obvious to me either that the therapeutic enterprise is an improvement. I think it is sometimes. There are well-trained therapists, and there is some utility in approaching the problem of psychotherapy from a scientific perspective, but there are plenty of bad counselors. And um, it isn't obvious to me at all that freeing that process from the grip of the church was all things considered a net plus. So, you know, especially because the therapist types also tend to think of themselves as superior in some manner to, let's say, the confessional priest, and that's also not obvious to me at all. So. <laughs> Thank you.